I'm sick. If you're wondering why I'm sick, let me give you this piece of advice. Never chew ABC, that stands for already been chewed, gum that has just recently come out of the mouth of a sick person. Shout out to Ella for making all of this happen. <coughs> Slow-mo sneezes are literally like the coolest thing in cinema. So recently we lost a hero, Stanley. Actually, he was not a hero, but he invented a lot of heroes. <laughs> this is Makara from the future and I've come back to redact my statement about Stanley not being a hero. I googled it and it turns out he is a World War II veteran. <laughs> And he was a pretty cool guy, so I wanted to honor him by making maybe a Captain Marvel costume. But then I looked up her costume and I was like, that looks way too hard. But I came across this green scaly stuff and I was like, I could totally make a Mera costume instead. Mera from Aquaman, because Aquaman's coming out soon anyway, that'd be perfect. And then I remembered <clears throat> Aquaman is not Marvel, it's DC, which is like the rival of Stan Lee. So I'm literally doing the opposite of what I set out to do, and I'm sorry. <laughs> But I already bought the fabric. So I started by making those awkward little chest pieces out of craft foam. You could also use a heavy interfacing or something of the such. And I cut out these general shapes and then glued them together with hot glue, took them apart, made adjustments, glued them together over and over and over again. If you want to know the exact measurements of them, um, hopefully that helps. If that doesn't help, maybe that helps. That doesn't help, maybe that helps. That doesn't, maybe that. There. So I'm going to trace these pieces onto my fishy fabric. Another potentially helpful suggestion would be cover a bra with this fabric. Like literally, that would be so much easier, but if you're going to do it my silly way, you're going to trace your four chest pieces onto some fabric, glue the two chest pieces together, then sew the two fabric pieces together and glue them to the craft foam. Make sure you have an ice pack on standby because you will most definitely get burned if you're working with this thing. <laughs> now the audio in this next clip is a little quiet, so feel free to read the subtitles to find out exactly what I was saying. And so I'm just literally gonna hold this up to myself and trace my whole self onto it. Do I look like an alligator? <laughs> Ow! Ah. Sorry, my videos have way too much blood in them. After cleaning up the pools of blood, I traced this shape off of myself, cut these lines out of it, and then sewed it together exactly as it was. Stitches were just for decorative purposes. So these are the pieces that I kind of have now, but for right now I'm gonna have to take a break and I need to go outside and bury my pet duck that actually died three days ago, but I just felt like I was not physically able to break the frozen ground and dig a hole for this duck. I kind of feel like I'm finally healthy enough, so <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go do that. So here it is. The two Sewers Pet Cemetery. The problem is I have no idea where to dig. I have no idea where any of the like 12 pets we've buried over the years are, so I don't know if I'm gonna run into them. This patch though looks different. I think that's where the raccoon is. This is way easier in the summertime. I know what you guys are thinking. Why don't you just get your strong, precious father to do this? Well, he is precious and he is strong and he totally will if I don't, but we can't let that happen because as I have mentioned before on this broadcast, he is very, very old and you don't just have old people do things that you can do, even if you are weak. Oh, soft spot. Oh. I know if I just push through and get deep enough, it'll get easier because the deeper down you get, the warmer it is because the closer you get to the center of the earth, the closer you get to hell. So as I was digging, I noticed one of my other ducks got out of the pen and was watching me dig this hole and there was like this unspoken. I know what you're doing, you're burying my friend. In his eyes and I just could not keep doing it in front of him. It's the next day, yeah, I didn't finish the hole. I didn't get out of bed yet. I burned my finger yesterday, so I'm obviously on bed rest. But I think given that it's three o'clock, I am ready to go down and face the hole. So um, I come down here in the morning, look out the window, and the duck is gone. I repeat, the duck is gone. Like, I am looking at the spot where it was. There's the spot. There's no duck there, and I've called my dad. He won't pick up, so I had to text him. I'm texting everybody like, Hey, do you guys know what happened to the duck? And I don't like texting it because, let me just tell you, autocorrect is not friendly to the word duck. There's the spot where the duck was. You see the duck. I don't. What? Who? Why? So it took definitely some time, but I found my duck. Some other animal dragged him under our shed. So I have to fish him out, and then it is finally time to lay him to rest. We're finally gonna bury it. I'm gonna go change into something a little bit more respectable, and we're gonna have a funeral because he deserves a fancy stinking funeral. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you'd like to say? Do you remember his name? I know it did. Be Cyrus. <clears throat> uh, Barnabas, you may notice that I'm not crying right now. Um, that doesn't mean I don't love you, but life has been pretty good lately. I have uh, 44,000 subscribers, so it's going to take a lot more than your death to get me down. Um, but I love you. 
To show that I actually do love you and care about you, I present you with this montage of our memories together. Uh, your role played by your brother, Maximus. <laughs> Congratulations, Miss Tours. Is it a boy or a girl? It's kind of hard to tell. Barnabas? What are you doing here? Did you have a bad dream? It's okay. You can sleep with me. Doctor, pray tell, where is my beloved Barnabas and why hasn't he come to visit me in this, my final hour? I'm sorry, Mr. Reese. Barnabas died in 2018. Oh, bother. Maximus. I thought you were going to act it out with the body. That would be okay. really gross. <laughs> To attach the chest pieces to the bodice piece, I sewed through all the layers. Yes, I sewed through the craft foam, because I am a straight up G. I wouldn't want to make pants out of this stuff because there's like really no stretch to it. And I like mobility, so I am going to use leggings and cover most of the leggings with this fabric. I'm going to cut enough to wrap mostly around the leg. I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. It's a little complicated and frustrating, but I'm so thankful that I'm making this because Merida... No, sorry, not Merida. Because I've always wanted to make a mermaid costume, but she's like a mermaid who can walk. Like, that's literally as good as it gets. So after I cut out the leg sleeve, is that a real term? I don't know. Let's coin that phrase. Leg sleeve. I cut little scaly design notch things out of the sides just to make it look purposeful. Whatever you do, make it seem purposeful. Then I trace those notches onto the edges of the other leg sleeve. I also cut notches out of the knees so that I could more easily run away from evil critters. I pinned the leg sleeves to the leggings while wearing them. Since this wasn't a stretchy fabric, I had to get hecka creative to make it fit properly, which entailed adding some pleats to the top sides of the thighs. Now I gotta find a way to take it off. Here's a shot of me removing the pants. Sorry, I'm just lying to you. It's actually a shot of me gluing what I pinned in place. Not going to lie to you, this was a tad tedious. So this here fabric that we are using for the back is stretchy, and we are using a sort of different colored stretchy fabric for the back because... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Voiceover Makara will take it from here. I was saying some such nonsense along the lines of we need stretchy fabric so we're able to breathe and it doesn't matter that it's a slightly different color because it'll be in the back and I don't care what the back of what I'm wearing looks like because I don't have to see it. Next, I drew out some little strappy things so that they could connect the front to the back and also so that I would have something to attach my sleeve to and then I tried it on to make sure it hit in the right direction and then I sewed it on. Then to attach the front to the back, I tried it on inside out and pinned it exactly where it needed to fit. There comes a time in every project when you realize you didn't think something all the way through. And in this case, I didn't think through how I would get this off of myself. I don't know if you've ever heard, but either rats or snakes or both can collapse their skulls to fit into small spaces. So when I'm trying to do something like that, I just harness the power of the snake or rat. <laughs> Then I sewed it together. Now it is time to sew shut the bottom of our onesie. Remember when you were a baby and you freshly had your diaper changed and your mom snapped your onesie and sometimes she'd snap a little bit of your skin in it and it hurt really bad? No, you're lying. You don't remember that. Because we don't remember things from before we were like two. It was time to add the zipper and I was very nervous. Do you have any words of encouragement for me? You can do it. I give that a five. Hand sew the bottom. That's better. Be sure to use a 16 to 18 inch zipper and don't pay much attention to what color it is. Because remember, you won't see the back. Only other people will. When I cut out the sleeves, I made them too small. Not because I'm an ignoramus, but because I wanted to add a panel of stretchy fabric to the middle of them. Because sometimes you have to move your arms to fight off evil critters. To make the gold pieces, there were a few items I needed to procure from my arsenal. I traced a spoon to get the bottom of the A perfectly round. I freehanded the rest and sprayed my wax paper with cooking oil. Next, plug in your 3D printer. I basically traced that A and then four Nike swoosh type things for the arms. If you think I'm using a tripod right now, you're wrong. You're being held between my two knees. I sprayed my glue creations gold and then used some very cheap fabric paint to add details to my suit. After outlining the seams, I sporadically splattered my suit with little gold honeycomb formations. P.S. I decided not to attach the leggings to the bodice. It's a lot easier to just put them on separately. To attach my hot glue creations, I hot glued them to myself. Some of you may find that redundant. In the picture we have available to us, it is not clear what her feet look like. So I'm just going to cover some old boots with that green fabric. Each of our boots were lovingly constructed by tracing the two sides onto fabric, cutting it out, and gluing it to the boot. Before I stick the inside pieces of fabric on, I spray painted the zippers gold. So I know these boots don't really fit the whole superhero aesthetic, but oh my gosh, I love them. I will literally wear these everywhere. Okay, now I love this wig, but I feel like it's just a shade too light to be Mara. Luckily, a few years ago after Halloween, I think I bought a couple clearance hair color sprays. Beans, beans. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Hi, 
I'm the little mermaid. I mean, mer... Uh, I have hydrokinesis, which means I control water. Think there's no water around? Think again. <sighs> See that? That's hydroponic condensated water. 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 Water, 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 water. Is this real?